You've only been able to talk to the teams and, and scouts throughout this process, the postseason process. What have you been able to portray in those meetings and get across to our franchise guy? Yeah. Um, obviously, the first question they ask is, am I going to be healthy? I mean, obviously, that's the first thing. I'm going to be healthy 100%. Um, but yeah, other than that, they're just trying to see what I know, man. Um, know about the game, know about coverages, what I like against cover two, what I like against man, all that type of stuff, man. What, what, for me, I think you're a, a great coach on the field. You're a chain mover. What's the mindset of being able to be that extension of the staff out there on the field and get those guys going in the same direction? Yeah, I mean, it's important um, doing that playing quarterback. I mean, obviously, as a quarterback, you got to be the, the best leader on the field, um, especially in the offense. You got to lead those guys around you. Um, Help them grow. I feel like that's where we changed at Florida State. I mean, we're the coach-led program at the beginning of the year, like beginning of my years, and then towards the end, it was all player-led, so it was special. And lastly, where do you see about Keon Coleman, one of your top targets? Yeah. Um, I mean, Keon's one of the best players I've been around in my life. Um, makes my job easy. Um, you just throw the ball up in the air, and he makes plays. It's, uh, it's quarterback's best friend, so thankful for Keon, for sure. Has you the process of Florida State? Uh, honestly, man, I, I met with a bunch of teams. I have no idea. Describe your career at Florida State, going from yeah. the lowest of the lowest to the highest of the highest, and what kind of coach is Mike Norvell like? Yeah, um, I feel like, I mean, my career has been kind of like a lot of people's lives. I mean, a lot of ups and downs. Um, I mean, it's been special. It made me who I am today. I'm so grateful for that. And the experience that I had with my teammates and different coaches throughout my career has been so special. Um, it's a blessing from the man upstairs. Um, Coach Arvell, has, I mean, he's changed my life around, changed my career around. He's gave me the confidence that I've always needed. I'm just a guy that just to believe in me, um, give me an opportunity. So I'm thankful for that for sure. Jordan, growing up in Palm Beach County, you face high level talent on a weekly basis yeah. playing at Benjamin. Can you talk about how playing at Benjamin in, in South Florida prepared you for the next stages of your athletic career? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing better than South Florida football. Um, you're going against the best athletes every single day. So, I mean, it's a blessing for sure. It prepares you. Um, I played with a lot of guys like Kyrie Elam. Um, so you're going against them every day in practice. So it was just special, man. And just being from South Florida is pretty awesome, too. Jordan, I think we kind of buried the lead. Uh, first off, it's great to see you healthy walking around. You. Can you kind of walk us through your recovery process and what the timeline you've been told is? Um, yeah. I mean, at this point, I'm taking it day by day. Um, I got out of my boot about a week ago. So, I mean, it's pretty special. I'm so thankful to wake up every single day and look down in my shoes. And I'm so grateful. Um, it's been a journey for sure. My family's helped me get through it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I should be ready by May. That's my goal, May, June. So I'm ready for it. What was the official diagnosis? Uh, yeah, I uh, love y'all. Uh, it's been, it was a it was a rocky road at the beginning, but I'm so grateful for y'all. I couldn't do it without you guys. Um, I mean, Tallahassee's the best. Um, it puts a smile on my face every time I'm down there, so I'm just grateful for y'all. Jordan, what was the official diagnosis with your injury? What was the official diagnosis? Uh, honestly, I just know I fractured my leg. That's it. <laughs> and who do you feel is your player comp? Um, I mean, I would say like someone like Kyler Murray or Jalen Hurts, um, this guy that goes out there and makes plays, a leader for the team. So, so sure. you're doing some stuff for Madden. What do you think your overall rating should be? I have no idea. I just want to be on the game. That's it. Jordan, what makes you the best quarterback in this draft? Uh, yeah, I just a guy that goes out and makes plays. Um, no matter what what I'm given, I feel like I showed it throughout my career. Um, always just going out and improvising, making plays. Um, a leader for a football team. I think that's one of the biggest things. You have to be a leader for your football team. You have to get the guys around you to play for you. And at the end of the day, I'm a winner. So I've proven that. So is there? Jordan, how does some point seem like you're so great things just slow down? Yeah, I mean, it slowed down just, I mean, obviously experience, um, getting more reps, and obviously Coach Norvell, Coach Tokars, Coach Dillingham, all those coaches that put me in a position to succeed. Um, that was the most special thing, so it obviously slowed it down a lot, um, teaching me defenses and going through reads and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm an imp improviser. Um, I make plays. These are, what was your place that moment like when you got your boot on? Did it feel like there were times where you're like, I don't know if I'm ever going to be at this time? Um, yeah, I knew, I knew there was going to be a day. Uh, I didn't know when the day was going to be. Um, but all glory to God. Um, glory to my family because, I mean, I couldn't do it without them. My friends, they push me every single day. Every day I wake up, I mean, it's a struggle when you have a boot on your foot. You got to sleep with a big boot on. So, I mean, having my two shoes on right now, I'm so grateful. And there's no complaints over here. Jordan, I was a pro athlete. What was that like? Who's the better athlete between you and your brother who's a pro 
Uh, I'm going to say my sister is the best, best athlete. I mean, but definitely me over my brother. Jordan, I've read an old quote attributed to you. Tell me if it's inaccurate. But it said there was a point where Isaac Bruce Jr. Yeah, I mean, just a young kid, 19 years old, 20 years old. I'm going through a lot. First time going through a lot. I mean, I said a lot of things back then that, I mean, a 23-year-old Jordan wouldn't say. Um, but, yeah, man, Coach Orville helped me through it. My family helped me through it. And I had the best teammates in the world. And just great support, man, and couldn't do it without them. Describe Coach Norvell as a man and a coach. Yeah. Um, Coach Norvell is one of the most special people I've ever met. Um, he cares so much, and you see in college football these days, uh, people that just don't care. I mean, you, I feel like it's a bunch of coaches that just want, I mean, obviously you want to win, but Coach Norvell cares about the man who you are. It's, it's the person before the player, and I think that's the most special thing about him. There's games where I played horrible, and he'll call me after, and it's not like he's cursing me out, man. It's just he's checking on me to see how I'm doing mentally, um, telling me that we're going to get back the next week and get back to work. So I'm so grateful for Coach Marvell. Um, he's a great father to his to his daughter, um, great husband to his wife. So, man, I'm so grateful for him. He showed me ways and taught me things that I'm going to use for the rest of my life. Jordan, how difficult was it after your injury to see what happened to Florida State that your injury was blamed for Florida State not making the playoffs? Yeah. Um, I, was, I mean, it sucks. It does suck. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to control what you can control. I've learned that throughout my life and throughout my career. Um, so, I mean, I just try to keep my head down, try not to listen to the outside noise. I mean, this Florida State team was really special. And I think we're, we're seeing that at the combine here uh, with the athletes and just the people that we have on the field. Um, but you can't control that, man. So we got to move past that. And I look forward to seeing Florida State win a lot of football games next year. Jordan, what do you say about Kenny Dillon? Yeah, Coach D Dillingham, I mean, that was a guy early on in my career that helped change it. Um, going through a lot, once again, I mean, I was I was a little rough, rough point in my career. Uh, he was like my best friend. He had my back through everything. He supported me through everything. So, yeah, I, I respect Coach Dillingham, and I appreciate him more, more than anything. George, did you talk to me? How did you deal with that situation? You got hurt. That's why you're not here. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I talked to my family. I mean, my teammates, basic stuff, man. I mean, we know at the end of the day, I mean, I couldn't control it. I mean, if I could have been out there and taped this leg up, I would have been out there 100%. Um, but God has a plan. Um, you just got to trust it. I mean, you can't you can't doubt God, and we know that, um, especially my family, my teammates. We know that. So, I mean, we had an opportunity to go play against Georgia in the Orange Bowl. Obviously, we didn't have everyone play, but I mean, just being, it was special being there, man. Um, and just seeing those young guys getting there and be able to compete. How did Norvell lift your spirits after you got hurt? Yeah, um, he was, I think he was one of the first people in the hospital that night. Um, just checking in on me every single day. Um, Miss Maria, Mila, just coming every single day and just, just checking on me. I mean, I think that's the most special thing about him is once again, he cares about the person. Um, it was nothing about football at that point. All he cared about was how I was doing mentally. And it's letting me know that he has my back through everything. So I appreciate, I appreciate him. Jordan, what do you think about uh, Mikey Williams? Yeah, uh, that's my guy. Um, he, he's a hard worker. I, I feel like he was the most improved player last year on Florida State. And I've said that to a lot of people. Seeing him at the beginning, I used to used to joke on him because he used to be so tired during condition. He used to blame everything and say his back was hurt or this was hurt. And just seeing his improvement, um, throughout his first freshman year. I mean, just seeing him grow mentally, um, physically, he's getting faster. Uh, it's gonna be a special year for him, for sure. Jordan, without you being able to do anything physically, what do you feel like you're trying to accomplish here this week? What, what do you want maybe teams to know about you or to learn? Yeah, just the type of person I am, uh, the leader I am, uh, what I know about football, because Coach Norvell taught me a lot. Um, yeah, man, just the basic stuff a quarterback's supposed to know and supposed to do. Jordan, what are the different things you're trying to grow and improve on with the injury to Sox yeah, obviously, football IQ, just knowing, knowing more about football. I mean, you can never know too much. Um, trying to learn about defenses more and more, um, what they do in the NFL. Um, yeah, man, schemes, all that type of stuff. Uh, I believe so, bro. I have no idea, to be honest. It was, it was a bunch of informals. Um, those informals go fast. You got like 15 minutes with each team, and you hop around. So. Jordan, what do you say about Troy Benson, the type of running back? He's going to be at the next level. Uh, yeah, Trey, he's, he's special. Um, everything about Trey is special. He's fast, strong, 
his balance is crazy. Um, and he's just learning, learning about himself. That's, that's the crazy thing. He's, he's just getting started. The ceiling is so high for him. Um, but the person Trey is, 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 is what I respect most. Is he's so, so, so humble. Um, yeah, so I look forward to supporting him and watching him. What's your vision for your NFL career? To win a lot of games, man. Uh, to help a team win a lot of games, help push the guys around me, and help lead guys around me. I believe so. That was at the Shrine Bowl. Yes, ma'am. Um, maybe a little bit. I haven't got the results back yet, so I have no idea. Yes, ma'am. You said advice. Yeah, just take everything one thing, one day at a time. Um, I said that was the biggest thing early on in my career. Um, I feel like I was more worried about the future. I wasn't living in the present, live where your feet are at. Um, I was worried what was going to happen next. I think that was that was the biggest problem I had. So once I started learning how to take it day by day, my life was stress free. Um, I was just worried about waking up in the morning, having a smile on my face, if I can breathe, and if God blesses me. I mean, I'm good. So I learned that, and that's probably the biggest thing. All my passing. I would say passing and my leadership. Um, obviously, I feel like when I first got to Florida State, like everyone knows, I couldn't throw the ball five, ten yards in front of me accurately. Um, but that was all in my mind. It was like a block in my mind. And once I cleared that, I mean, everything opened up. And I have so much more to grow, more much more room to grow um, with that. And I can look forward to seeing it. What made this year special? You guys obviously started off knowing yeah. that you guys had a good a group of talent. What made this group of guys go 13 to know? What was the driver for this? Um, I'll say that brotherhood, just playing for the guy next to you. That bond that uh, we had in the locker room was like no other. Um, I think that was the most special thing. I mean, during camp, you see him every single day for, shoot, 30-something days. Um, and I never got tired of seeing him. It's like every day, day you walk in, you have a smile on your face. And I think that was the most special thing is we knew we were playing for the guy next to us. Early on in my career, I feel like it wasn't like that. Um, yeah, man, just, just a special, special, special team with a bunch of special people. Florida State still had a lot of guys come through in the transfer portal. DJU being one of the guys that may be able to um, take over for you. If, if you were giving DJU, Brockman, or anybody else advice, why Florida State? Um, I mean, it's a dream. Um, I'm the biggest Florida State fan. Um, always have been, and even a bigger one now. So, I mean, just Tallahassee and the people around Tallahassee are so special, and the coaching staff is one of a kind. So, I mean, if you can play for guys like that that actually care about you as a person um, before a player and want to see you succeed, not just on the field but off the field, I think that's the biggest thing is you run into a lot of coaches that really don't care about what happens off the field. Um, and Norvell is really big on that. And, I can't, I can't thank him enough, but yeah, Florida State's a place to be for sure. Jordan, you're talking to NFL teams. They want you to drop one play that typifies you at your best. Like, this is, this is what you want in the NFL. What's yeah. That I mean, I could go through the whole thing, but I mean, I, I'd just say simple four verts, the option of a beater to, to the boundary. Um, gives you options everywhere against cover three. You could hit seams against cover two. You could hit the beater across the middle of the field. I mean, the wheel backer drops under the beater. You can come down to the back. I mean, you just have options everywhere, man, so. I'll say that point for sure. Best example of that? You said best example of that? Yeah. I mean, we ran four verts a lot. I got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Johnny or Keon. I took advantage of that for sure. That's a good cover three. That's a big problem. Yes, sir. 100%. Yeah. Yes, sir. How do you Outside say of some of your former teammates, uh, who are some receivers that you'd love to play with in the NFL? I mean, there's a lot. Devontae Adams would be sick. Um, George Pickens. Um, there's a bunch of guys I can name. A bunch of spe special talent up there. So, is there... Yes, sir. I was. I was. Yes, sir. I mean, man, if I have an opportunity to play in the NFL, uh, that's all I'm looking for. Uh, obviously, for playing for the Dolphins, being close to home would be awesome, but I just want an opportunity. That's all I can ask for, man. You had, one of, you had a lot of iconic plays. One of my favorite ones was against Florida at Dover, where you broke, like, I think you broke everybody's tackle twice yeah. against Florida. Walk us through, yeah. what is it like when you just decide that you're going to run and be able to use your legs, which is one of your best weapons? Yeah, um, I would say, I mean, I'll do anything for this football team. Obviously, running around, you don't know if you're going to get popped at any point. So 
when you play for the guys next to you and you just want to give everything you have is, is special. So, I mean, I'm not really thinking about much. Just trying to get in the end zone. How did your leadership last in the question, room change last... following Northern Alabama? Sorry, what is it? How did your leadership in the locker room change yeah. following Northern Alabama? Um, just being there for them. I mean, that was the main thing. I, I was – Coach Norvell came to the hospital that, that night. My first thing with, to him was I was going to push my surgery back to that following week so I can go watch the Florida game. Um, yeah, I just say just being around the team. I'm trying to give Brock some insight um, on just to relax and be himself. Um, the moment's not too big. It's football at the end of the day. So, is there, there's a, thank you.